کلنتیون اکسنا و عالمیال کس و دنیا دکه جوکتان داو دیال کنه شود و آدم و رئیس کوبان آنولای اعلان دانه هدیه الله اول دلی ره دو جرمی شومن و آه قرن که اما لایر کی اود جوده جنرال صادق عمر محمد آ صادق جان و داد که اولی قانون این کس و کعود دارتی با لیویر این صادق جان لایویه رو صادق جان ایا یو این مانیتورین گروپ کو حی کس و آدای آدای مفر بدن أو إلا أي كوي تمن جاري مدة أوجه على السنة أيتهاي أما أوجه على إسك بدن إن أوساد غحرير للي يهاي أورك على الشباب ونلاش غيره سدا أوجد أي لاير كان ما نتا عن سوء السنين سو نوجو شجع سو حجران يحارض ماش أي مرة يسو لو أنا واحد أرك يسن براه برشدو لسوق اللي أرنت على سوق بجبودي لكن أنا قبارتان أي أنا كجرنا ما ندون إن أنا هربونه وأنا دابا عدد في فيجا يونيفرسال إلا وحي بسلاطان ما جعلنا نهرب بودنو سيدا وضياشا في فيجا يونيفرسال أيو هلان حق بوعدة أو تفترن هديا لا يراد وربحين ترى يا وحا لغو رايسي هدبا الدراس إن إن قرار لغا سميي يو إن مونيتورين جروب كو أي سميي سي يا وحا لغو حسي دود فرابضا يا وليبا شخصيا سوماردو أي تقارنو أو لوير كانو دوديا إن صادق إن جنرال صادق أن لسميان ورئيسية كلا دوان شخصيات كلا دوان وعلسي في عنو تقانان شخصيات كا عاو هل كان كم مقالي دون تانا يا وحا كم إذا دار مقاعيضة دي يندون مرئين تانا أن قرين كا هاوذا شوق اللي نوانا لاحظ لنين أن حوبين كترسان يو أن مونيترين جروب كا أو مقعيسة اللي هذو أن جيد باها دور اللي هذو وعسوا ها أن مدحا panel of experts مركا ورنا لأورنجري يو أن مونيترين جروب أو مقعي هذا بدي شي حد کلام مغلی دور تان جنرال صادق او این بدن ریبوت کن قیب فر بدن کمی ده و حد مغلی دور تان داهر حسن گوتا لام وادن سومالی دل یرا دو و حد مغلی دور تان عبداللهی احمد محمد جیر و آسوا ها حبین کترسن اور کنیسا و حد کلام مغلی دور تان هدیه لهی را ده حس و حد مغلی مغلی کلام مغلی دور تان حسین عثمان حسین و احد دایرکتور جنرال نیسا هنجری سلو کلا عبداللهی محمد علی سنبلوش و اصول افتیس و هنجری دایرکتور کی هره هیئت در نیسا این تن حلق لگوره جنین و حد کلا مغلی دون تان آور بین تان سوئن لوگو حسیو این تن هر لگی سعید احمد کدیه موادن لیره هذا احنا دبتی کمیشنر از دی پلیس فورس و هجک سید اکلا واحد کم مغلی دون تان موادن کلا اصلا مگه ایسی لیه کمال گوتالی داد کاس آوردن ایا واحد لوگو حسیو آور بین تان انجام تو که هیو أي قيبة كلا دوان كجد جيران سيابة كلا دوان أيوة حليان وربحين تان سدا أن فهنسنا هاي أن برنامج كانوا وجاذي وحي هيد وربحين سرعة أن لو قلت لك جيرانين أن جبد أيوة بحضه لكن سك الصباح هات وين اللي جريسة أما معلومات كي ولا قيبي أن دت كانوا ولا يسدا مرك لقى هذا أيوة حن لصعنا إن لويري وحن واقم فدنش على وحن جد بدونن مالك لا جاري دونن لكن أن وحوي ورك أن هل كان أي واحد أنكم سوينهين أن وحوي راتي قرصونا مجران وحنا كلا أن بارتان دار وجرنا لفتي كيس الدكمين تكلا أن جم كان أن برنامج شدة ندم بكو حس دونه حتى بس ده وحوي عين يأذين تان كلا أن صادق لو يأذين يو أيان وحنا ربنا أن لوير كيس أما قرين كيس كوجانو أن إلا أيو سكاش ميدي إلا أي هاتن أيو وحنو سوجي تمير أو قرار لذو حشيجيان صادق إذا ما هلوه يس سكاش ميدي إنه يسوي بلودين يس نهاي وحمان تبلودي ماشة صادق يا لوير كيس سي أذق أي أرنت على سكاد يوديدين لكن وحلا يلا أف جوبل أف جوجل لو ما أذيجو أنا أنا ينسو دويو جيرمي أو هلوير كيس أهن المريكة ركون الله دل مقرضة واشنطن هذا جوجا المركب هو سو دويو نعد جبدنا and we can get our house to go so race again 90 percent i'm 95 percent in greece will go by my damn money as well as a for calling and my damn was an afghan who you're going to see that i'll get a year because when i was a couple of like in shala to allow us to do i'm still looking at you know jeremy welcome to universal tv and thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us this evening good evening thank you it's it's a pleasure to be with you abdi Fantastic. I understand and um, your Somali is not that great. That's true. 
That's true. Right. I'm, I'm still learning. I will strongly recommend you, advise you to learn Somali language because it's one of the best languages in the world. Let me tell you. But not easy. Not easy. I, I, took, I took six classes trying to learn it, and I, I, I probably picked up about ten words in those six classes. <laughs> if if, if <laughs> a boy who was born um, um, in a small, tiny, little, little village can speak English, i.e. myself, you could definitely only speak one day in Somali. And more importantly, let's okay. straight um, go to uh, the heart of the matter. Could you please explain to us or give us a background information of this case against your client, Jasadak? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Um, I was uh, contacted by General Sadak uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, and he came to me um, with a, you know, unfortunately, a very, a, a pretty common story uh, among prominent um, Somali individuals, uh, businesses, uh, certainly among among people in the government. Uh, there's a very, you know, a difficult relationship that many Somalis have with the U UN monitoring group. Um, it's now called the panel of experts, but. Um, the, the, in 2018, in November of 2018, uh, the UN Monitoring Group uh, prepared its last report, and there was a confidential annex attached to that report that contained some of the most uh, serious but, but just false and malicious and unsubstantiated allegations concerning General Sadak, the most serious of which um, was this this allegation that he had ties to al-Shabaab uh, and was uh, sort of a secret agent for, for al-Shabaab. Um, that and all the other allegations in this report, uh, let me just be very clear, were completely false. Uh, and even, even the, the, the UN monitoring group who, who drafted this report uh, didn't, even, even, didn't even try to substantiate um, these allegations with anything resembling uh, evidence. Um, on, the, on the rare occasion when they would attempt to substantiate an allegation, they, they would refer to unnamed sources, uh, individuals you know, who they don't name and don't, don't make public, alleged this or that about, about General Sadak. But it was readily apparent just from reviewing the report uh, that these allegations were unfounded and unjustified. But yet they were very serious, and they were contained in a, in a report to the UN Security Council, and that can have very devastating consequences for anybody who, who, who finds themselves the subject of, of such a report. And uh, so the mandate to me was to uh, investigate these claims um, and figure out the, the real story, the real truth, um, and if, as we suspected would be the case, we were able to disprove these allegations. And by the way, we a person should not be in the position of having to disprove allegations. Uh, the the person proposing to or to make an accusation needs to come forward with proof. That is the standard of of, of proof, the burden of proof that uh, should exist in in this world. Um, and the UN didn't even come close to to meeting its burden of proof. But we set out to try to clear. General Sadak's name by you know uncovering the, the true facts and uh, that led to uh, my coming to to Mogadishu, interviewing a range of witnesses, um, covering all of the the the, the subject matter um, that the UN um, purported to to cover, but didn't adequately cover in this report. And you know one thing I found, and this 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 is this is sort of a pattern that I've noticed. Uh, when I've represented other clients uh, dealing with a similar issue. As you may know, I, I also uh, represented uh, Hassan Haire, the former prime minister, and, and many others who have been, in, unfortunately, in this kind of position of being unfairly targeted by the UN monitoring group. We find that when we start to do the investigation, we, we, we learn that the monitoring group themselves didn't do a competent uh, professional investigation. We talk to the people that you would feel you need to talk to to uh, corroborate or, or, or disprove the allegations. And you find out that 
these people have never spoken to the monitoring group. No one ever reached out from the UN to interview these relevant witnesses or to try to gather the relevant documents. When we did that, we essentially did the investigation that the monitoring group should have done uh, before uh, recklessly making, making serious accusations against uh, an innocent Somali individual. Um, we found out uh, readily that uh, these, uh, these allegations were really e easy to disprove. Um, and then we, we then prepared a lengthy letter uh, that I sent to uh, Jay Bahadur, who at that time was the coordinator of the panel of experts. So going into 2019, uh, the, the monitoring group had been disbanded and a panel of experts had been put in place, but they put in charge of the panel of experts this individual, Mr. Mr. Bahadur, who was a, you know, a key figure on the monitoring group the prior two years. Um, and he has a really a notoriously bad track record uh, for making false accusations, accusations he can't uh, back up. If I if I just could intervene, um, if I could just could intervene there, why why would why why would that be? Why would he have uh, such a reputation as somebody who is representing uh, United Nations, who in the eyes of Somalis, uh, not all of them, particularly the the government officials. They are doing a fantastic job in Somalia. Why would a such person be in, in charge? Well, that's a great question. Um, he should, never should have been in charge. That was a terrible decision by whoever made that decision. I mean, ultimately, it was, it was the Secretary General of the United Nations, but I'm sure uh, he took somebody's recommendation. And uh, that was a bad decision. The Somali government protested that decision from the beginning. Um, the Somali government actually refused to recognize Mr. Bahadur as the coordinator of the panel of experts and refused to work with him, um, which, you know, I have my opinion on that. I think that was the right, the right move because it was just very well established that Mr. Bahadur was not a good faith actor. Um, and what, there are plenty what do you of other think his that, motive uh, was? Uh, sorry, Jeremy, what do you think his motive was, Mr. Bahadur? Uh, you, you'll have to ask him why he uh, spent so many years trying to destroy the reputations of honest, uh, well-meaning, good Somali people, why he would write reports without any basis, any in fact. Uh, I can speculate on what his motivations were. Maybe it's fame and fortune. Uh, maybe it's being relevant uh, in, you know, in this uh, international community effort to help rebuild Somalia, but to rebuild from the outside. Um, with, you know, the outside influence, he ended up writing a book and uh, making a movie out of it. So you tell me what his motivations uh, were. Uh, well, well, what other well, UN official does work, in, it does work in a country, and then they come out with a Hollywood film about, about themselves. Um, right. You don't see that too often, and, uh, and you shouldn't see that too often. I don't think someone should be personally profiting from, you know, from this humanitarian work that they purport to be doing. But the work speaks for itself. Whatever is, is reasoning, um, he just has a long track record of putting out reports that have no basis. Um, same thing happened with Hassan Khaire. And how do we know that there was no basis? Because ultimately, and this doesn't happen too often either, unfortunately, because there really isn't a credible mechanism in place to redress uh, false accusations made by the UN. I'm trying to help put such a mechanism in place and now we have a few examples where, you know, where you protest uh, a report, um, you bring to light the true facts, um, and then you ask nicely for the UN to uh, rescind or retract the allegation. Of course, they don't respond when you ask nicely. Um, and so you have to push and push and push and don't, you know, not take no for an answer. And ultimately, they, they retract the allegations. Um, and that's a good thing. And I, I do want to, I, I know I'm very critical of, of, of the UN in certain ways, but, you know, the UN is not monolithic. There's lots of different agencies and divisions and departments of the UN, and some, you know, do a great job. Uh, this particular, my main grievance is with the, the monitoring group, which became the panel of experts. But I should say, to their credit, uh, there is a new coordinator, and uh, she took this situation seriously, uh -huh. and um, she did take action 
to have uh, the most serious allegation against General Sadak withdrawn and, you know, very clearly and conclusively withdrawn. So I take that as a positive. I hope that will continue. Maybe they're turning over a new leaf. Maybe it's because of, you know, the activities of people like myself and others who are, and I credit a lot of people in the Somali government who are standing up for, for Somali citizens and saying, you know, enough is enough. It's okay for people to examine and, vet and investigate, but it has to be done in good faith, and it has to be done according to, you know, reasonable uh, uh, standards. And uh, where there's a mistake made, I mean, even if it's not a conscious, deliberate effort to smear somebody, people make mistakes. And where a mistake is made, uh, the U.N. needs to own up to it and, and, and remedy the, the problem, which in this case, I'm very happy they did with General Sadak. Right. Um, just let's go back to be, by the UN. You think when uh, such an organization with this, such a magnitude, when um, reports are being put together, um, it goes through stages and people will sift through and do their homework before it ends up a general uh, security council, um, you would think. Um, are you saying there is a, a catastrophic failure all the way along or was just something that only Mr. Bahadur uh, was behind. No, it's it's a it's a more uh, institutional problem. I think it's not just any one person. Mm. I could name, you know, I don't want to finger other people, but there there, Mr. Bahadur is one of many examples of of people associated with these monitoring groups, who uh, sort of shoot first, shoot from the hip, and uh, you know, ask questions later. Um, they they just come out with reports. I mean, I, I can give you an example. Another client of mine um, a few years ago um, was was called by in one report uh, as a suicide bomber. They said he was the, the suicide bomber in, in an attack in Puntland a number of years ago. Mm. This is uh, uh, Mohammed Zubair. Mm. He wasn't a suicide bomber. He was a government official. He was alive and well, and you know, living his life, doing good work for, for the Somali government. But right. they, they said he was a suicide bomber. They had his passport, and they put him his name in a report. I mean, that's outrageous. And, and, and by the way, it took two years to get them to recognize that mistake and, and, re and retract it. In the meantime, you know, what is he doing for two years? Mm. He can't travel. He can't work. He can't live his life. Mm. So it's not it, – there, there, there are failures at every stage of the process, starting you know, from the initial reporting – and then, you know, getting these reports corrected. It's not easy. I can tell you in General Sadak's case, we went to, you know, very high levels um, within the UN. And their initial answer is, we can't do anything about it. Sorry. Really? Uh -huh. That's your answer? You can't do anything about it? When someone is falsely accused? I mean, uh -huh. you know, Somali lives are important, just like everybody I, I, else. I, I, absolutely. Uh, I'll reputation. agree with you on that 100%. It, Go ahead. Yeah, so I, you know, it, I think we have to. It's important for people in in these positions of leadership and authority. I mean, yes, in principle, on paper, it's an important task. Let's right. investigate compliance with the sanctions regime that's in place in Somalia. Absolutely, right. we want to make sure that the laws are are properly observed. But you know, in practice, uh, you know, the job isn't always done the right way. Mm. And you know, the people that they put in charge don't always have ex even experience. Right. I mean, there was a guy before Bahadur, uh, Jarat Chopra, there was uh, Matt Bryden, there was you know, various other people who are on these uh, monitoring groups. They're not professional investigators, many of them. They're journalists. They're, you know, they come, I'm not, with no, no, no offense to journalists, uh, certainly a journalist can do an investigation, mm. but... You know, do they know, you know, they're writing financial reports about alleged corruption in you know, various places in the Somali government. Do you have experience in accounting and forensic accounting? Do you know, you know, how to do that kind of investigation? Are you asking the right questions? Are you looking at the right documents? So we need, you know, capable, competent people in these positions and they need to act in good faith. Right. They need to. Um, understand the seriousness of their work, because if you make a false ac accusation, you can really destroy someone's life. It can even put them in physical danger. What I mean, would, General what, what is, would is you say? Of being a member of Al Shabaab. 
What would you say the argument that says, listen, um, the UN is a uh, massive organization, um, one or two people, you can find a bad apple in everywhere, um, but the UN is much better than that and bigger and moving forward. What would you say to that? I look, I think there's a lot of potential. I agree with you. It's, 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 a, it's, it's not a monolithic organization. There's you know, great people there in all parts of the world doing very important work. And, and you know, I commend them for doing that work, sometimes at great personal sacrifice. But that doesn't mean we should just uh, assume that just because it's the UN doing the work that it's, it's professional and it's credible and it's honest. It isn't always the case, just like in any organization. Right. There are good people and bad people. And, um, and so I think people need to stay vigilant and um, you know, push and make sure that um, the right people are put in these positions of authority and that there's accountability when they make a mistake or even worse, they, you know, they purposely uh, try to, to um, destroy someone's reputation. I think you, know, you see quite frequently with these monitoring groups, and hopefully it's changed. Now there's a new organization, the panel of experts, but they, they find themselves uh, taking sides in political disputes and in, in political disagreements that are going on within Somalia. And, uh, you know, I don't think that's their role. I, I don't no. think that should be their role. Okay. We should um, leave the politics to Somalis. Yep. Somali politics uh, should be left alone for the Somalis to sort it out. I hear you. Um, just um, to talk about the people that you interviewed when you went to Somalia, uh, you interviewed countless number of people, among them Dahir Hassan Gutale and Abdullahi or Abdullahi Ahmed Muhammad Jir, Hussein Hussein, Abdullahi Muhammad Ali Sambloche, and Saeed, Saeed and Ahmed Kahi. What was this people's reaction? And of course, Kamal Gutale. Uh, you didn't interview Kamal Gutale, I understand. I did not interview him, but uh, I interviewed his father. Right. Um, and I... Uh, I know him. I've met him uh, many times. And uh, what, what's, what's your question? The, the, you interviewed his father. And when, when I read this, his father and himself, they, they, they don't see things eye to eye in terms of the allegations against Saddam. That appears to be true. Uh, I, I, I didn't speak to Kamal directly, so I can't say for sure what his perspective is, but I can tell you categorically, uh, you know, the father spoke very highly of General Sadak. The father, General Sadak, lived with him, um, you know, in the 90s and early 2000s and, um, you know, attested to General Sadak's wonderful character um, and, you know, completely uh, repudiated any suggestion that, that General Sadak um, has been anything other than a model citizen, um, both you know, both when he was younger and and today. Right. I personally do not know Kamal Gutale at all, but from what I gather, is a decent uh, gentleman. That's what I hear. Credit to him. Anyway, um, we are moving on to the end of time. I have two or three more questions to ask you. Um, I'm sure you've been asked this before. And, and I earlier alluded one of my questions. Um, why would individuals within the UN um, will jeopardize the work of the Somali government and the dream of the Somali people and the work of the UN itself? Uh, you'll have to ask them. Well, again, I you think you must have you know, some sort of idea. Uh, actors have uh, they have their own individual motivations. I think. You know, with Mr. Bahador, his, his record speaks for itself. You know, what he's doing and what he has done uh, outside of the U.N. speaks for itself. Um, others, you know, maybe they think they're helping, but they're, they're not. Or they're on one side of a political debate and uh, are, so, are so ideological and so, uh, um, you know, colored by their, their ideology that they don't see the other side. They don't respect the other side. And they're willing to engage in, you know, efforts to destroy the other side.
again, I don't think this is what the UN should be doing. I don't think is what the UN is doing, um, you know, uh, by and large. But I think we have examples um, with uh, some some people on the monitoring group over the years. Mm. And I'm not talking about the current panel. I, I, I don't know them. And they'll, all I know about them is actually that they've done the right thing with regard to General Sadak. So uh, I'm not I'm not trying to criticize the, the current um, people on the on the on the panel of experts. But in the past, and I and I and I think there have been complaints about some of these people, and uh, and changes have been made. So credit the leadership who ultimately, you know, is willing to listen and and correct some of these appointments. And maybe now we're on a better path. We'll have to wait. Right. And see. Uh, just for the record, um, our understanding here on Universal TV um, here in London and, and other studios we have um, in, around the world is that the UN is massively contributing to the rebuilding of Somalia and that is something to celebrate. And like I said earlier, uh, in massive organization like that, you'll find a few bad apples everywhere, bad apples um, as, you, uh, as people put it sometimes. I have a video clip that I would like to you to comment about, um, 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 and I'm sure that you have seen this video. Um, let's watch this clip. It's a few seconds long. Okay. Madam President, I would like to inform that the panel of experts has clarified upon the review of information previously submitted to the committee by its predecessor, the Somalia and Eritrea Monitoring Group, regarding General Sadek Omar Mohammed, that no evidence was found of affiliation to Al-Shabaab and that General Sadek is not the subject of current investigations by the panel. I thank you, Madam President. I'm sure you have seen that um, Jeremy video uh, before. Um, what was it about yes. uh, and the context he's speaking about? Well, that's what I, I think I was referring to earlier. That is the chair of the uh, sanctions committee, who's the uh, ambassador from Belgium, announcing um, that they are exonerating uh, General Sadak of the most serious allegation that was made in the November 2018 report of having an association with al-Shabaab. They're confirming what is obvious, um, that there uh, is no evidence and never was any evidence uh, of any affiliation between General Sadak and terrorist groups or any kind of acts of terrorism. And uh, he's also confirming that there's no further investigation ongoing with regard to General Sadak. So that's wonderful. And uh, we're grateful that uh, the chair has, has made that announcement. And uh, we, we commend him for doing that. We commend the panel of experts for uh, reporting that to him. And uh, we consider this matter uh, involving General Sadak to be um, successfully concluded. So um, this case is closed indefinitely. Uh, I don't have any present plans, you know, to, to, to do anything further. Uh, I think that uh, you know our, our voice was heard, and we raised um, you know very serious challenge and complaint. Uh, on what happened uh, in November 2018. And uh, now the panel of experts and the, the chair of the sanctions committee has appropriately responded. Um, I mean, they're, they're still writing reports about people and I uh, get calls quite frequently actually from others who feel they've been uh, unfairly treated by, you know, by the panel of experts or the minor group in, in a prior report. So this may not be the last you hear from me on, 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 on these types of issues. Um, and I'll always help uh, if I can, uh, where I see that uh, there's unfair treatment of friends and you know people in Somalia who I care about. Uh, but you, but you, with regard you, to General Sadiq, we're very you, happy. You, you say friends. The um, you accuse for Mr. Um, Bahadur um, for um, um, financial gains that he's doing this and that. Uh, same things can be said about you. You are a solicitor and you're making money out of this. You're not doing it for free, are you? Um, I'm not making a lot of money. Uh, and I, and I don't still make money. money from every case. You're still making money. There's no free lunch. Uh, 
well, there is a free lunch sometimes. I do work for free sometimes. I do, have you heard of the concept of pro bono work? We do in, in the United States. Lawyers do that. Mm. We actually have a duty to do that. And I do that a fair amount in Somalia. Uh, I am a private lawyer and I do represent clients and I do get a, a paid a fee and I'm proud to do that. And you probably get paid for being a journalist, as you should. Oh, um, boy. I say friends in a, in, a, in a kind of loose way. I think I, I just I count many, many friends among among people in Somalia, um, people all across the country and in the diaspora. I mean, maybe right. not everybody is likes me or or I like them, but uh, I, I, I feel a sense of kinship with uh, many people in, in, in that country. Right. Um, I've been there many times. I want to go back and at some point and uh, I want to help to the extent I can. Uh, fantastic. I welcome you and your colleagues to go back to Somalia and see the one, this wonderful young country and the potential that it offers um, to its inhabitants and people in the neighborhood and neighbors around the world. Two quick questions. If you could, um, um, in a nutshell, answer these questions for me, I'll be grateful to you. One, since Sadiq is, since they admitted they got it wrong and Sadiq is now off the hook and not in, uh, under investigation anymore, um, can Sadiq, is Sadiq is entitled for compensation or are you going to apply compensation on his behalf? Um, that, that hasn't been finally determined that that's not an easy thing to do. Um, it's, 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 it, I mean, we can always ask for compensation, but, um, there's, there's really a very limited mechanism to take legal action, you know, to like you would in a private dispute right. where you can go to court and seek compensation. So we're, we're not doing that. Um, and, uh, that's really, that's never been my motivation nor Sadak's motivation, to, to, to be honest. Um, it's never wow. been about money. We've never asked for money. Um, what we've asked for is justice. Uh, we've asked for the record to be corrected so that um, this good man's name can be cleared and he can continue doing the very important work that he's doing um, to keep Somalis safe. It's ironic. They accused him of being someone who is associated with you know, a group that's causing so much death and destruction in Somalia when in reality he's doing the exact opposite, he's fighting to keep people safe and help restore, uh, you know, peace and calm uh, to 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 Somalia. And we need people. I think you would agree with me. We need more and more people focusing on that and being, you know, congratulated and commended for that, not put under unfair attack. Uh, I think we want to encourage and incentivize, you know, many more General Sadaks to emerge and to you know, help restore a safe and secure community, um, both in the Venadia region and all, and all around Somalia. Uh, finally, um, these individuals that you have interviewed um, in Somalia that I, I mentioned their names, I understand that they consent you know there was a there was a um they were happy to give you the interview but did you did they knew uh, one day their names will be published uh did they know i mean they knew what we were doing and uh i, I asked them you know would you be willing to sign a sworn statement and they knew how it would be used did they know that my confidential letter would be leaked by someone at the un to the international media. I mean, they probably should have assumed that was a possibility because that is their pattern in practice, but that never should have happened. Uh, that's really disgraceful, actually. If you see the letter that you have in front of you, it says on it very prominently, it's highly confidential. Yes. And we did everything we could to keep the matter confidential. Um, I don't think these witnesses, you know, need to be uh, you know, uh, exposed publicly for just trying to cooperate and uh, help uh, tell the truth about about an individual, but yet now their names are out there because of someone's very reckless uh, action, and I, I I don't know who did that, but it's someone connected to the UN. Um, so I'm I'm proud that they were willing to talk with us and um, sign these statements. 
uh, they did that freely and fairly and under oath and uh, because they thought it was the right thing to do. Excellent. Um, thank you very much, Jeremy, for being with us. That, was, that is the end of the, this interview. We're grateful for the time you've given it to us. Looking forward to speaking to you in the near future. Thank you very much and have a nice day. And that was all. And thank you. Thank you. So, I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. And the community has been able to get the money from 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 the money. لكن ان وان ودي لو داغني صوبتنا وحي تاي معلومات كدتك اي ربان اوغادان وان ليدين سو بندغا ادي امورده دا دادن ويدا حوي ولو سو غليا ان وايدين ما هدعلنينا ان دا وشدينا اي برنامج كان قيب قادر شدينا مقاعيا دا انوغو ان هل كان كاخريي ان اي كمديهين داهر حسن قوتالا اي عبد الله احمد محمد جير حسين حسين عبد الله محمد علي سامبلوش سعيد أحمد كذية أي دت كلام ذا ما عيدا صورنا وحي كقرنا ينربط كان وحين هاي دت كلا ورايستي وحتى فيجا يونيفرسال أي كنتي ماهن with exception أو سنين كانوا ورايستين أو آه مذنة مذنة كمال قلت عليه لكن يو أنتو أيه دقوني ورايستي سي أي ورر أنا حقيقين كرين أنا حقيقين كرين يونيفرسال هان أي شيء جيان and like you know how cool and in all the work and inside the who could be was it all all can cook on and I'm happy jim carno and a saga mark to a the one happy jim carla left in is a first of one scene i did color see i'm a cast i will so bond again and hosting a car go away you and tina lady runs good day in all the love to go to a cool guy no see i'm a mark to know how long or you want to kiss go there so bond again see i know it all you know and balancing I mean by Charlotte to the media could see I love that I've been already seated I didn't ask for my sense of the girl in and how good is the case of the girl in but I'm sorry I just want to have the little half for some in a I'm the king for you I don't know see me and I will have the film I'm not sure 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 I'